in this closing hour. Your goodness and your mercy is in this house today. And Lord, we are thirsty and hungry for more. Would you clap your hands? Would you lift your voice? Would you let Jesus Christ know how much you truly love him? Give him more than 30 seconds. Come on, why don't you give him a heartfelt, meaningful worship and praise under the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's not about us, it's about you. Lord, move in this house. Move in our spirits. Move in our hearts today. In Jesus' name, would you worship him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind today. Lord, we worship you.
Lift him up. 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 Come on, why don't you clap your hands and lift your voice? All across this building, from the left to the right, lift him up. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to praise your name. I'm going to exalt you with your great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Would you turn around and look at somebody and tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today? What better place to be than the house of the Lord? Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We are delighted to have every one of you in the house. Amen. Thankful that you're here. If it's your first time here, you're in for a treat. If you would, amen. You are in for a treat. We do have, it's, we do have a special guest with us today. A special guest minister all the way from Ohio. His family came into town. Y'all know his son very well, Brother Reese Dillingham. Many of you do. Uh, he was with us here. Amen. He was with us here for an internship uh, back in 18. I think that's right. 19 somewhere. I can't remember. There's been a lot of stuff going on. But anyway, but his father is here with us today, his wife and family, uh, Brother Chris Dillingham. I found out they were coming, and uh, so me and Brother Reese, we worked something out, and he's, uh, his dad is preaching for us today. So we have a guest minister with us this morning. Amen. Our children and all the teachers, they won't get to experience it all, but they'll have a good time upstairs. Uh, but we're going to have a great time in the Lord here today. Amen. But if you would, if it's your first time, you are in for a treat, and that is the couch. So if you'll turn your attention to the screen, we have the couch for you today. <sighs> okay, I guess we'll start the couch without you. Come on, hurry up. We're running late. <sighs> you guys got here. Sorry. <laughs> this doesn't happen. I just spilled my coffee. She this needed day. her coffee. Hey, Truth Church, this is Luke White. And this is Olivia White, and this is The Couch. Where imperfect people give imperfect announcements. Y'all know what first steps is? <laughs> What's first steps, Luke? First steps is for our beginning people and people who want to dive in to getting to know about Truth Church. Where is uh, first steps located? Over there. <laughs> or if they're facing us, it'd be over there. Over there. That's where it's located. Yeah. Out the sanctuary doors. Out the sanctuary doors. There's two double doors. There's pictures of people on the sliding doors. So it's first steps on the glass. First steps on the glass. Today, <laughs> after church. For those of you who are in deeper life, we will not be having it today, but we will continue next Sunday. Hey, all you women. Women's prayer is Tuesday at 5 a.m. Be there. There'll be coffee and donuts. And juice. Mm-hmm. Lots of juice. Lots, Lots of, of juice. juice. <laughs> Me slapper. Uh, hey everyone, say spring breakouts. Oh, it was. I was supposed to say again. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Okay, they're gonna happen this Wednesday, so I want to see you there, and it'll be this month and also the month of April. So is that all I'm supposed to say? Something like that. So, something like that. Just be here Wednesday at seven. It's gonna be great. Everybody Everyone say Easter. Easter is right around the corner and we have our Holy Week coming up. We are having services on Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of Holy Week. And on April 3rd, on Saturday of our Holy Week, we will be having... I messed up, isn't <laughs> it? On April 3rd of Holy Week on Saturday, we'll be having an Easter celebration. It will be candy and candy and lots of candy. And more candy. And more candy. In case you didn't get that. <laughs> we need your help. We need candy filled eggs for our Easter event and you can bring it anytime. Just bring as many as you can. These kids eat a lot of candy. So don't look at me like that. <laughs> on April 4th, on Sunday, it will be our Church Easter. Easter. On, <laughs> on, sun, 
On April 4th, on Sunday, we'll be our church having a church <laughs> choir. We'll be... On April 4th, we'll be on having... On April 4th! What are we having? On April 4th, on Sunday, we are having our choir. Then we do... Oh. The one where you have a pen? You write oh, your stuff down? Oh, okay, yeah. So if you want to sign up for choir, go to those round tables in the sanctuary and there should be something for you to sign up. Our first choir practice is on March 18th at 6.30 p.m. If you're a first time guest today, we would love to get to know you. Just go to the table uh, in the back. There's usually some TC Connect cards on there. And if you fill one of those out and give it to one of our ushers, they have a welcome bag to give you and there's some candy inside. Um, we're so glad that you're here today. Luke, do you have anything to say to our guests? No. <laughs> <laughs> you could say terrible. welcome. Yeah. Welcome to the house of God. <laughs> you're always welcome. That's all for the couch today. We'll see you next time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the brakes, Pastor Darren. Look, I'm sorry. I had to do it. Um, I, I just, I had to do it. If you don't know, Pastor Darren's birthday is this Monday. And he's turning 50. 50 years old. Oh my goodness. He is such an old man. But... We are going to wish him a happy birthday by singing him happy birthday right now. So everybody join with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, brother Darren. Happy I don't even know how to follow that. So, <laughs> thank you very much. I am not 50, I am 39. I am still in my 30s for one more year. I remember when my father turned over the hill or 40 years old, so. I'm gonna hold on to the 30s as long as I possibly can. Amen. Uh, one thing I want to add to that, and that is our Easter celebration, our Easter Holy Week. Um, when you leave the church today, there are going to be cars on the tables in the back. Please grab as many of those as you can. Make sure you hand them to friends, family, people you work with. Invite them to be a part of our Holy Week. There will be many different opportunities for service uh, that week. Very special service on the Friday, on that good Friday, that evening. We're going to uh, spend a time of devotion, and then we're going to receive communion. And so encourage people to come. Some people just like to be a part of communion. It could be something that catches a heart and a spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. If our ushers would please come, we're going to get ready to bring our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Is anybody thankful to give in the house today? Praise God. Praise God. If you're joining us online today, we welcome you. We're thankful that you're with us today. Please take this opportunity to worship God in your giving as well. And be thankful for what God has done in your life. And I know God's going to continue to bless in your life today. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give into your kingdom, which you've entrusted into our hands, Lord. We only have because, Lord, you provide. You are our provider. And, Lord, we're thankful for that today. Lord, would you bless every individual in this house. Lord, bless their homes, their finances, and their health. In the name of Jesus, Lord, would you continue to bless those individuals that are giving sacrificially in transformed truth. Lord, just this morning, God, people declared your doings. And, Lord, I'm thankful for the blessings that you have bestowed upon the people of God this week. Oh, Lord, I know it's because they have been sacrificially giving to you. In Jesus' name, we honor you and we give you thanks. And again, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give in Jesus' name. And the church says amen. Amen. If you would, stand to your feet. Find a place to give here at our platform. Let's worship the Lord together.
Chains are broken, true has spoken, it is finished on the cross. Now I'm living in your freedom, Jesus, you have set me free. your spirit every captive is released for this purpose i am living because jesus you have set me free nothing's gonna hold me back no nothing's gonna keep me down jesus has set me free i'm free indeed i will give you
going to begin to come forward. And I just encourage you this morning, if you have a need, whether it be physically, it can be mentally, we all face different things. We all face different battles. And I know for me, about five years ago, it was in this altar that I had fear in my life and it was gone because I took a step of faith. So I just encourage you to take a step of faith. Don't leave this place the same. So I just encourage you this morning to take a step of faith and let our prayer team come and pray for you. They're going to anoint you with oil. Worship with us this morning.
Come on, if you're able in body, would you lift your hands to Jesus all across this building? Come on, every everybody that's a part of true church, every guest that's here today, would you just lift up your hands as a unified body right now? Oh, hallelujah, every high fist must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. Come on, hallelujah. If you lift your hands, God is going to begin to touch you right now. His presence, His power is moving in this house today. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. The work was finished, you were buried in the ground, but the grave it could not contain you, for you wear the victor's At the cross, his work was finished. Jesus, you were buried in the ground. But that grave, it could not contain you because you wear the victor's crown. Think about it. He wears it. your victory. We are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. We are victorious through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We are victorious. We are overcomers. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody give God some praise right now. Come on, somebody give him some praise. How many of you have experienced the overcoming power of Jesus? Come on, I think we ought to fill this house with the sound of praise this morning. I don't know about you, but I've been set free. Come on, I said I've been delivered. I've been set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let everything that hath breath 
Praise ye the Lord. My, my, my. Y'all feel the Holy Ghost in here this morning? The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. How many, how many of you are thankful today for the liberating power of the Holy Ghost? I got news for you. You don't have to be bound by anything. You don't have to be bound by fear you don't have to be bound by anxiety. You don't have to be bound by depression. You don't have to be bound by hopelessness. You don't have to be bound by alcohol. You don't have, come on somebody. The liberator is in this house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, my, my, my. What a beautiful, beautiful presence of the Lord is in this place. I don't know how you feel this morning, but I feel like Jesus is about to do something in this house. Come on, anybody believe that? I got, I've got, my brother greeted me this morning and he said, I have this sense of expectation in this place today. I just feel that this morning. I feel that somebody is going to be healed in Jesus' name. I wish I could get a little help this morning. I believe somebody's going to be restored in this house. I believe somebody's going to be renewed by the power of the Holy Ghost this morning because that's what Jesus specializes in doing. Praise God. Praise God. It is, it is our honor to be here in Denison this morning and uh, so, so excited to, to be here with you to worship the Lord together. And I just feel good this morning. Just feels good to worship together. Are you thankful for God's church? Are you glad to be a part of God's family this morning? Amen. Praise God. I want you to do me a favor. Let's just get right to the Word. Let's just cut through all this stuff. Let's just get to the Word. I'm, I'm like, I, listen, I'm a little hyperactive. I've got a little ADHD. I'm just like amped up, ready to go this morning. Is that all right? So we're just going to get right into the Word of the Lord. I'm going to have you turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to start reading at verse number 1, 2 Kings chapter 4. While you're turning there, I want to give honor to your pastor and his beautiful family. I didn't know. I didn't know that I was his birthday surprise coming to preach this morning. I didn't know that. But we certainly love the Gilbert so much. You are blessed with a tremendous pastor. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, the dude is the hardest working human being on the planet. I don't think he sleeps. He's always doing something and just a leader, got tremendous ideas, loves this church, has a vision for revival, and I love our times together. We're able to talk, so I just, I love and appreciate the Gilberts very much, their beautiful family. And I do want to thank this church. My son was here for two months. Reese was here for about two months and had a great time as a, uh, doing an internship uh, before he went over and served for a couple months in Brazil. And so I, I want to say thank you to this church for taking care of my boy. And I appreciate that very much. And heard nothing but great things about, about that. Bishop Gilbert, I give honor to you. Brother and Sister Gilbert, been friends of the family for a long time. Love the Gilberts, appreciate them. And I'm blessed today to have my beautiful family with us. And uh, amen. Amen. It's good to have adopted family. Liv and Winston are also with us. They're part of our adopted family. They're, they're Texans, but they're, they came uh, to, to hear me preach, I think, is why they came this morning. Or may have been to see my daughter. I'm not really sure. But anyway, amen. We're just excited to be here. Enough of that stuff. Can we just get in the word of the Lord? Is that all right? 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse number one says, Now there cried a certain woman of the wise of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. The creditor has come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. 
And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in the house. And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Everybody say a pot of oil. And then he said, Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more and the oil stayed. Then she came, told the man of God, he said, go sell the oil, pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. He asked this poor widow, what do you have in the house? And she said, I don't have anything but a pot of oil. I want to preach this morning on this subject. The oil is enough. The oil is enough. And I believe, I was praying over here this morning. I was praying over here during worship. And I believe I'm here on mission this morning. I believe I have a word from the Lord for this church. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. The Holy Ghost is about to do something in this church. And he wants his church to be prepared for what he's about to do in Jesus' name. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to lift your hands toward heaven right now all across this place. And I want you to prepare your hearts to be receptive to the Word of God. Come on, can you lift up your voices right now in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we love you today. Jesus, we magnify you and praise you. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, I pray right now that you would prepare our ears and our hearts to be receptive to the Word of God. Lord, that we would not just hear it with our physical ears, but God, we would receive it into our spirits today. And I pray that we would not just be hearers, but we would be responders to your word. Lord, let your spirit have free course in this service. And God, you do whatever it is that you desire to do in this place. Because I know, God, that you have plans for these people. I know that today, God, you have a work of the Holy Ghost that is to be done in this service. And we surrender our plan and our agenda to you. And we're asking God that you take complete control of this service. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, lift up your voice to heaven for just a moment, would you? Come on, just lift up your voice. Oh, just lift up some praise right now. I feel like the Holy Ghost is coming into this room right now. Come on, somebody lift up your voice. God, I want everything that you have for me in this house. Whatever it is that you desire to do in my life today, God. Here I am, Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, why don't you turn around, high five, six or seven folks and tell them the oil is enough. Praise God, you can be seated. How many of you know the Word of God is powerful? As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that in the beginning, the world was in chaos. How many of you can relate to a world of chaos? If you don't know what chaos looks like, you can come to my house for just about five minutes and we'll show you what chaos looks like. We live in a world of chaos right now, don't we? That was the beginning that was what this world was like it was devoid of form it was without shape there was nothing but darkness in this world but the bible gives us a very powerful combination he establishes a precedent from the very beginning when the bible says 
that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God began to move. And then God said, let there be. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is no more powerful force in the universe than the, than the moving of His Spirit combined with His Word. When you combine the moving of his spirit with his word, he brings order where there used to be chaos. He brings structure where there used to be chaos. He brings light where there used to be darkness. So I've got good news for you this morning. You didn't just come into another church service or for another religious gathering. You've come to a place. You might have walked into this room here this morning and your world is full of all kinds of chaos. But I want you to know this is a place where the Spirit of God is moving and where the Word of God is going forth. And you might have walked in this place full of darkness and hopelessness and fear and chaos, but I believe by the time you walk out of this place, you are going to be full of the power of the Holy Ghost. But sometimes in Scripture, there also is great understanding not just in what is written, but what is not written. Allow me to explain here for just a moment. In this particular passage of Scripture, the Bible tells us that there was this woman who was a widow. Her husband was now dead. He was a servant. He was a servant of the man of God. He was a servant of the prophets. He was now dead. And the Bible says that this widow was left with her two sons and that the creditor was now coming and putting pressure on them that they were going to uh, take them into slavery. We don't have a lot of background information on this family. We don't know how they got into this situation. Maybe it was because they made some poor decisions. Anybody in this house ever made a poor decision? Just look who's raising the hand. Everybody else is lying. I'm just telling you right now. We just, we just revealed who all the liars are in the house. Praise God. Holy Ghost conviction is moving in this place. Maybe they made some poor decisions. We've all made some poor decisions. Maybe, maybe they squandered. They didn't invest properly. They didn't save like they were supposed to. Maybe they just consistently and continuously made poor decisions. I've got people in my life, I call them serial bad decision makers. You can set them up, put them on a tee, and some way, somehow, they're probably going to mess it up. Come on, somebody. I'm just being real this morning. Is that all right? Serial bad decision makers. Maybe they made all kinds of bad decisions and now they find themselves in this predicament. Or maybe it wasn't that at all. Maybe they had planned. Maybe they had a, a 401k. They had everything set up. But how many of you know sometimes life just happens? You can have all your ducks in a row. You can have everything planned and organized and, and have a strategy for your future. And life, all it takes is one phone call. All it takes is one pandemic. All it takes is one storm. Come on, somebody. And it can wipe everything out of your life. But I've got good news for somebody in this place. Is it? Can I come down here? Will I mess anything up? Will it? Okay. All right. Come on. I've got good news for somebody in this place here this morning. It does not matter whether you're in your predicament because you made a lot of poor decisions or because life just happened to, happened to you. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God is not as much concerned about what you have done as he is concerned about where you're headed. i got good news for you. We serve a God who's not interested in dredging up your history and dredging up your past and your horrible mistakes from yesterday. He's interested in giving you hope for tomorrow, promises for your future. Come on, I got good news for somebody. I'm not here to talk about what you did yesterday. I'm here to talk about what God wants to do in your life today for your hope for tomorrow. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So whenever somebody comes along and tries to tell you about what you used to be and about what you used to do and all the mistakes, you just need to just hold up the hand. Just give, give, give them a la, 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 la. I'm not going to listen to any of that because I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
I've been washed in his blood. I've been full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm not, come on somebody. It's not about what happened yesterday. I've got good news for you. God has a plan for your tomorrow. He's got a miracle for your tomorrow. He wants to bring you out of your situation. Just gonna flow in the Holy Ghost a little bit this morning. Is that all right? We got so many people that that get stuck in their yesterday and get stuck. Well, well, you know, and, and, and we do this to other people. We look at people and say, "Well, they made their bed. Now they got a lie in it." Can I tell you? I'm so thankful that I serve a God who is a God of grace and a God of mercy. Come on. I don't deserve anything. I don't deserve his blessings. I don't deserve his favor. I don't deserve healing. I don't deserve a miracle. But God, who is rich in mercy. You want to know why we worship like we do? I'm going to tell you why. Because we know where he found us. We know where, come on somebody. He brought me out of the miry clay. He put my foot on the solid rock. And I've got a song. I wonder if there's anybody in this house that is thankful that he doesn't hold your past against you, but he's got a hope for your tomorrow. Somebody ought to give God some praise right now. He brought you a mighty long way. He brought you, come on, I said he brought you a mighty long way. See, I'm not talking, I'm not talking to the folks that came out of mama's womb speaking in tongues. You know, there's a few of those folks that like to, they like to make you think they came out and they were just perfect from the very get-go. They've never had any problems. They've never had any issues. But there's some of us that have been through some stuff. Huh? There, there's some of us in this room here today that some folks gave up on us. There's some folks who said, they'll never amount to anything. I sat across from a psychiatrist. I know you find that hard to believe. But I sat across from a psychiatrist as a kid. He looked, he looked at my mom and looked at me and said, that boy's going to end up as a juvenile delinquent. He said, he'll never amount to anything. He's going to end up in jail. He's going to end up, a, that's what he said. You know what? I wish I could find that psychiatrist today. I grabbed him by the shirt collar. And I tell him, you know what, sir? You were exactly right. I was headed to a life of trouble, but Jesus found me. He changed my life. He turned my, come on, I wonder, is there anybody in the house this morning that is thankful that Jesus changed your life, that he turned you around? I think we ought to pause for just a moment right now. I think everybody across this place ought to lift up your hands right now and just thank God that you didn't get what you deserved. I think everybody in this place ought to lift up a sound of praise right now that he had mercy on you. He didn't have to do it, but he loved you. He cared about you. He cared about you. Jesus. Gee, anybody thankful for where he's brought you from? I refuse to sit on a church pew and just be silent and just be quiet. I made up in my mind I'm going to be a praiser. I'm going to be a worshiper. God's been too good to me. He's brought me too far. So the Bible says, so the Bible says that, that this, this woman, we don't know how she got in this situation, but all we know is when we're introduced to her, the Bible says she's under stress, she's under pressure. Anybody know what stress and pressure looks like? Come on, the Bible says that in the last days, men's hearts are going to fail them because of fear. We're living in that season. We're living in those last days where people are scared out of their ever-loving minds. She's under the stress and she's under the pressure of, of the, this, this creditor that's coming against her. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there is a spirit of the creditor that is alive and well in 2021. I want you to know this morning 
that there is, whether you know it or like it or not, there is an adversary that is doing everything he can to destroy you, to destroy your marriage, to destroy your home, to destroy your family, to destroy this church. The Bible says that the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Right? When you first read that, it kind of looks like Jesus is being a little bit redundant. We know, we, you know, to, to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, we, we know what the thief does. We know what he's supposed to do. But when you study that out, there's, there's some deeper meaning there. The, the word steal is the Greek word klepto. Any kleptomaniacs in the house? Anybody grab a hold of your purse or whatever you got next to you, your phone? Some of you are like, preacher, I thought we weren't going to talk about our past, right? That's under the blood. Kleptomaniacs. Klepto. You know, what, you know what klepto means? It means to take something that rightfully belongs to somebody else. Can I just tell you there are some things that rightfully, rightfully belong to you as a child of Jesus Christ that rightfully belong to you that hell is doing everything. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost about to come on right now. I'm coming in the name of Jesus. It is not the will of God for God's people to be dealing with depression and anxiety like they are dealing with in the name of Jesus. I've come to tell somebody right now, it is not God's will for you to be suffering under that heavy hand of depression and fear and anxiety. Hell is trying to steal your joy. Hell is trying to... In the name of Jesus, by the power and by the authority of the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of depression and the spirit of anxiety and the spirit of fear in this place. You shall be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. My joy belongs to me. My hope belongs to me. My peace belongs belongs to me because he purchased it with his precious blood. I've been set free. Listen to me. Jesus didn't pour out his spirit just so you can get goosebumps on Sunday. Just so we could come in and feel good on a Sunday morning and walk out and still have fear and still have anxiety and still have depression. He said, I give to you all power and authority in my name. Some, oh boy. I'm just going to flow a little bit here this morning. Some of y'all need to walk into your home. And when you walk into that place, you need to walk in and say, in the name of Jesus, uh, fear and depression, you have to go right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, it's time to start exercising the power and the authority that God has given us. Uh, hell is trying to steal some stuff out of your life that rightfully belongs to you. The Bible says that he gives us a peace that passes all understanding. You don't have to understand everything that's going on in your life. How many of you have ever, ever asked the question, why? Huh? Anybody ever asked, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why, why can't I catch a break? Why is everything going wrong? Can I tell you, when you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, you don't need understanding. The Prince of Peace will come into your life and he'll bring a peace that passes all understanding. It's time that we resist what hell is trying to impose on our lives. Sometimes we gotta. Sometimes we gotta get like this little mother, and instead of going on Facebook and complaining, my God in heaven, I just went to pastor, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So we, we go to Facebook and we want to tell everybody about our problems, and we want to complain about it. What we need to do is get in the prayer closet and pray the power of the Holy Ghost down. When my kids, when my kids were really little. Rhett was probably, I don't know, five or six. And Reese was probably three, maybe. Maybe a little older than that. And, and, and Rhett came into me one day. I was praying in my office. I was studying. It was late at night. He came in. He said, Dad, you need to come pray with Reese. And I said, okay, what's going on? I said, y'all supposed to be in bed. He said, Dad, you need to come pray with him. 
I'm like, my God in heaven, he's like four, three or four years old. What in the world's going on? And I walked in, they had a little bunk bed, you know, they had a little bunk bed. And I walked in there and I said, hey, bud, I leaned up on the bunk bed. I said, hey, bud, what's going on? He said, dad, the devil's messing with me. At three years old, four years old, you know what I did? I didn't just, oh, isn't that cute? Bless his little heart. He probably just heard something, whatever. You know what I did? I climbed up on that top bunk bed. He had, he had a little ceiling fan. And so it hit me in the back of the head about every three seconds. I leaned up over the top of him. I laid my hands on him. And I said, in the name of Jesus, hell, you better get your hands off of my children. You have no place here. You have no place in my home. You have no place. Get your... Come on, somebody needs to get some Holy Ghost power and some Holy Ghost authority this morning. In the name of Jesus, hell, you've got no place in my marriage. You've got no place in my finances. In the name of Jesus, somebody needs to declare, I've lived without peace for too long. Today is my day. I'm taking it back. to steal and to kill he comes some of the things we face in the physical the Bible says that there was a woman that came to Jesus you can be seated for just a moment there was a lady that came to Jesus and the Bible says she was bowed over and Jesus didn't look at her and say woman you're healed he said woman thou art loosed now not everything that you face physically is the result of a demonic attack I've rebuked the bald demon many times. <laughs> hey, I was at the gym one day. That's why, I, that's why I look like I do, because I go to the gym a lot. You can tell. You can just feel. You can just tell, right? I'm at the gym one day, and there's these muscle heads over there, and they're lifting weights, and they're just going crazy. I thought, man, this is going to get ugly. This is going to be embarrassing real bad. So I'm over there stretching and really wasting time hoping they would leave you know and I'm doing some stretches and all of a sudden I got the worst Charlie horse in my in my in, in my hamstring that I've ever got in my life God's honest truth I didn't I didn't touch a weight I didn't lift anything I fell to the ground I was screaming ah, somebody help me anybody ever felt that hey can I tell you I didn't get attacked by a Charlie horse demon some of us just old boys getting old. But the Darren, hang on to those 30s as long as you can because it's coming for you, bro. It's coming for you. But here's the good news. Well, I just, if I feel the Holy Ghost this morning, I feel, I feel it. Here, here's the good news. Whether you're facing the spirit of infirmity or you're facing just something that your body is in the natural process of just getting old. And I don't know if y'all know this or not, but we're all dying. We're just all in that process. I've got good news for you. Jesus has power to drive out a spirit of infirmity. And he has power to heal your sick body. By his stripes, we are healed. Anybody in this place still believe in the healing power of the name of Jesus Christ? I still believe he heals all manners of sicknesses and diseases. I still believe that he is my God, the healer. And lastly, it says he came to destroy. That word literally means a destruction of soul. He's come to take your soul to hell. Listen, listen, y'all. It's not time to play church anymore. There is a spirit of antichrist like we have never seen before that is moving in our world. And we can't come to church and just look cute and play patty cake and go through the motions of having church. We need to be the church that is full of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you what our world needs? Our world does not need another cute church. They got all kinds of cute stuff out there. They need a church that is full of the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost because Jesus said, that's what the thief came for, that I've come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. I 
I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. I'm coming to. There's no clock, so I'm just going to just keep preaching. To, I don't have to fly out till four, so we'll just keep on preaching. Just have church. And, Everybody's like, no, you won't. <laughs> the Bible says, the Bible says, the creditor has come to take my two sons. Well, I just feel this in the Holy Ghost so strong. There is a spirit that is coming against some people in this church like you've never felt or experienced before. But I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, it is not hopeless. And you don't need to be afraid. Because, oh boy, Jesus is setting you up. Jesus is setting you up for a miracle that's going to blow your mind. Jesus is setting you up for a miracle that is going to transform your children. It's going to transform your grandchildren. It's going to transform your... Jesus is setting you up for something Instead of complaining about how bad it is and how hard it is and how tough it is, some of us just need to be like this mama who said, you know what, it may be tough, but I'm not going to suck my thumb. I'm not going to complain about how bad it is. I'm going to get to God. I'm going to find God. Everybody else, excuse me. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to talk about it. I don't have time to complain. I've got to get a word from heaven. I've got to get a word from glory. I'm going to get to Jesus because I know that he's got a word for my situation. She said, I've got to get to the man of God. You're just going to have to excuse me. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm just going to have to just move you off to the side because I've got to get to God. And when she got to the man of God, he almost dismissed her. She said, she said to him, my husband's dead. I'm a widow. My sons are about to be taken in captivity. And the man of God looked at her and said, what am I supposed to do? Can I tell you, it is not in a man's power to save you. If you're looking to a man to do it, it ain't never going to happen. But then something hit him. I believe it was a move of the Holy Ghost. He just kind of tried to move her. What am I supposed to do about your situation? I didn't do this. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about this. And then he looked at her and he said, let me ask you a question. What do you have in the house? What do you have in your life that God can use for a recipe for a miracle? And she looked around and she said, everything in my life has been devastated. I don't have anything left in my house. But I do have a little pot of oil. Everybody say a little pot of oil. I do have a little pot of oil. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in Scripture, every time oil is mentioned, it's referenced to the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, and he said, you go tell Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power. But you know what he said? He said, when you go tell him this, you tell him that I see two olive trees on either side of the golden candlesticks and they're providing an endless supply of oil into those candlesticks so that the light will never go out. And he said, now you go tell him, it's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, say it, the Lord. Can I preach for just a moment? Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you what the answer is for every situation, for every problem, for every sickness, for every disease? You know what the, what the strategy for revival really is? Is we need a good old-fashioned outpouring of the Holy Ghost. If we're going to see revival like we believe we're going to see revival, it's going to be because the Holy Ghost is moving. I want people, when they walk into my church, I want them to walk in and be like, oh my God in heaven, what did I just feel? Something is happening right I've come to tell somebody in this place that the oil is enough. Whatever you're dealing with this morning, whatever you have going on in your life, I want you to know that the Holy Ghost is enough. Are we Pentecostal by name or are we Pentecostal by faith? I'm Pentecostal because I believe that every single person in this community, in my community, I believe every single person ought to experience the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe 
that when the crack addict comes in contact with the power of the Holy Ghost, that addiction has to fall in the name of Jesus. When the alcoholic comes in contact, when that broken down marriage comes in contact with the power of the Holy Ghost, he brings reconciliation. And re There's nothing that the Holy Ghost cannot do. I'm going to tell you a story. You can be seated for just a moment. I'm going to tell you a quick story and we're going to come to a close and then the Holy Ghost is going to move. I was preaching a revival. I was preaching a revival in southern Illinois and we've been there for several days and uh, we, we were having good church but it was, you know what I'm talking about? It's like good church. It was good church but it wasn't great church. And I just, I'm not, I refuse to be satisfied because I don't just serve a good God. I serve oh. the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. <laughs> so I, I just, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, can, can we go to the church and pray just a little bit in the afternoon? I said, man, I just, feel like, I just feel like God wants to do something. I feel like there's a breakthrough that's coming. Okay. That phrase, listen to me, there's a breakthrough coming. I went to prayer, and we were praying, and, man, we were getting after it. I mean, we were having, we were having prayer. And all of a sudden, the Lord brought to my mind a lady who had been coming to those revival services. And she was one of those people. And this is, this is no slight. But there's folks that come in late. I know not here, but in Toledo, there's folks that come in late. And she would come in late and she would leave early, not shake anybody's hand, never talk to anybody. And the Lord laid her on my mind. I said, Pastor, tell me about that lady that comes in late, sits on the back row back there. He said, oh, that's Linda. He said, let me tell you about Linda. He said, if you knew her life story, bro, it would blow your mind. He said, she's been abused every single possible way you can ever imagine. She said, from the, he said, from the time she was a little girl until she was an adult, he said, she has been abused in every single possible way you can imagine. He said, Linda has been diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. She has over 17 different personalities. And he said, man, you just never know. You just never know what's going to come out. You never know what's going to happen. He said, the doctors have told her that she would never get out of her home that she lives in. And he said, but there was a connection in the church. She started coming to the church. And the doctors are blown away that she's even coming to church. It's a miracle that she's even coming. And, and he said, but she can't talk to people. And she can't, can't pray. And she can't do all this stuff. And I said, I said, Pastor, I just believe the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. And I believe God's going to fill Linda with the Holy Ghost. And he said, let's pray together. Let's believe it in Jesus' name. So, in case you can't tell, I'm a little wild. And if Jesus says something, I'm just going to believe it. Amen. And so I thought, when she comes into church, what a great way to start a service is for, for Linda to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost yeah. before there's one song. Woo. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. I walked back to Linda when she came in. We waited. I said, hold on until Linda gets here. Just be up there playing a little bit. When she gets here, then we'll get started. I went to shake Linda's hand, and she did like one of these numbers. Everybody was watching me. She did one of these numbers and wouldn't even look at me. And just kind of hunkered down in her, her pew there. And I felt so horrible for Linda. I felt so bad for her. And so I said, okay, let's go ahead and get started with church. And it was going, but it was just kind of not hitting. And so I started preaching. I started preaching about the Holy Ghost and the moving of God's Spirit and the power of God. And it just wasn't quite clicking yet. But all of a sudden, I, I don't remember what it was that I said, but I, I, I made a statement about faith. And there was a young man sitting on the left-hand side. And all of a sudden, in the middle of my preaching, he stood up. He lifted up his hands. I found out later, 17 years old, raised in a pastor's home, had never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He lifted up his hands, and God instantly filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He had with him... Three of his buddies from high school that had never been to a Pentecostal service. <laughs> hey, not being raised in church, I recognize the deer in the headlights look, right? Like these folks are out of their minds. They are crazy. And they look at each other. My dude's up there. Man, he's just getting all over the place and the next thing I know they tapped each other all three of them ran out of their pew came right to the front where I was preaching which is a dangerous place to stand they came right in front of me I said boys what's going on and they said we want what he's got I said let me tell you what he's got he's got something that's hey it's something better than anything this world can offer it's Jesus on the inside working on the outside
All three boys lifted up their hands. We prayed for all three of them. All three received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now we have in church, while we're praying for these three boys, I hear a blood-curdling scream. When I tell you, it sent chills up my spine. A lady in the back, sweet sister, faithful saint of God, been to every revival service. The, the pastor had told me before, before one of our services, he said, you see Sister So-and-so, he said, she's so faithful, she loves God. He said, the doctors have told her she's a ticking time bomb. It's only a matter of time before her heart gives out. They've done everything they can possibly do. And so she, she's screaming in the back. I mean, screaming. I mean, just out of her mind. I ran back there. I said, my God in heaven, what's going on? He, she said, i got to tell you a story. She said, this afternoon, I was in my house, and she said, I started feeling chest pains. And she said, I've had so many heart attacks, I know what it feels like. And she said, I tapped my husband and said, you better get me in the car and get me to that hospital pretty right, right away. They got in the car, they started going. She said, halfway there, the Holy Ghost came in my car. And she said, the Holy Ghost said, get to revival service. And she looked over at her husband and she said, turn this car around, get me to church. And he said, he said, baby, listen, we got to get you to the hospital. And she said, I said, get me to revival service. And like any good husband will do, he turned that car around and drove her to revival service. And she sat all service, clutched over like this, thinking at any moment, at any moment it could happen. But when these three boys received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden she said, I felt something from the top of my head all the way down through my body to the soles of my feet. She said, she said, preacher, there is no pain. It's completely gone. She went back to the doctor. And the doctor said, I don't know what's happened to you, but it's like you have a brand new heart. There's no more. Hey, don't you tell me there's anything too hard for my God. He's able. I said, he's able. He's able. All we got to do is get the Holy Ghost moving. While, while we're praying with her and she's having a move of God over here, her son's on the other side. Backslider, been away from God for many years. He had a pack of Marlboros in his hand. And from about 20 feet back, he took those Marlboros and chucked them at the altar. He fell face first at the altar and God refilled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I looked in the back. And there I saw Linda. And I saw Linda with tears. And she just kind of sat there and she slipped out of her pew. And she headed for the back door. And I thought, man, I thought, I thought for sure tonight was the night. Instead of going out the door, she turned and she went down that side aisle. And she came down. And when she turned that corner, she had tears streaming down her face. And she said, preacher, do you think God can fill somebody like me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? I said, Linda, I'm going to tell you how much God loves you. He told me this afternoon that today is your day. She lifted up her hands. And the ones that the doctor said, there's no hope for her. She'll never go back to society. She'll never be able to. Come on, somebody. He, the ones the world had given up on, the one the world said there's no hope for, she lifted up her hands. God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She got baptized in Jesus' name. She got her own apartment. She got her own job. I'm telling you, the, whole, the oil is enough. The Holy Ghost is enough. We don't need anything else. We don't need all the things of this world. All we need is the Holy Ghost to start moving among us. Stand, please. Here's what the prophet said. The prophet said, the only thing standing between you and your breakthrough is you need empty vessels. If I can just find some empty vessels, the oil can start flowing. 
As a matter of fact, the Bible says when they got to the end of it, and she said, bring me yet another vessel. And the son said, there's not a vessel more. And the Bible says, and the oil stayed. It stopped flowing when they ran out of empty vessels. Can I tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost? I feel like the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, this church better get ready for a breakthrough and for a move of God like I'm about to sin. Prayers that you have prayed for years and years are about to be answered in the name of Jesus. Things that you have faithfully and consistently prayed about. People that have not been able to get breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is about to move. All he's looking for are some empty vessels that'll say, Lord, let the oil flow through my life. Let the Holy Ghost flow through my life. I want to all across this place, I want you to lift your hands toward heaven right now. And I want you to make yourself available. Come on, make yourself available to the Holy Ghost. If there is anything in your life that is hindering a flow of the Holy Ghost, repent of it. Let God cleanse your, your vessel right now. Let God clean your heart. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to grab the hand of your neighbor. And I want you to ask them right now, would you come to this altar and pray with me? And I believe the Holy Ghost is going to be poured out in this place. I believe that people are going to be delivered. I believe that people are going to be set free. I believe, listen to me. I believe that there is a voice of the prophetic that is in this room right now that God wants to speak into your life the things that he wants to do and is about to do in your life. He's just looking for somebody that he can get in partnership, somebody that can get in agreement with him that will allow the oil to start flowing. I believe that today, you hear me now, I believe that today is a beginning of that oil that's going to start flowing. I believe that today is a beginning of a new dimension of miraculous experiences that you're about to have. Come on, would you come? Would you come? Come to this altar. And I want you to lift up your hands toward heaven. Come on, all across this place, lift your hands toward heaven right now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, lift up your voice. By the power and by the authority of the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. In the name of Jesus, receive your miracle right now. He 
always looks out for me. Come on, show me the time. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. All of the earth is His. All of the earth is His. And the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to find somebody to pray with. I want you to find somebody to pray with. Because there is something powerful about uniting together with somebody in faith. There is something powerful. She didn't do it by herself. Her and her sons had to go into this room together and start pouring out that oil together. Listen to me. I believe as we partner together, I believe there's about to be a move of the Holy Ghost in this room right now. In the name of Jesus. I want you to find somebody to pray with right now. Find somebody. Be led by the Holy Ghost. I need you to pray in faith believing. All across this place. Come on, all across this place. Lift up your voice right now. Come on, lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be set free. Come on, somebody pray down the power of the Holy Ghost right now. God, let your spirit move. God, let your spirit move. In every home, in every family, in every life. Loose your power and go ahead. Go ahead, that's it. Go ahead, that's it. Let the Holy Ghost move right now. He called In the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost move right now. Come on, I need somebody that knows how to pray in the Holy Ghost. I need somebody that knows how to pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody let the Holy Ghost flow through you right now. the Holy Ghost move right now. Let it flow through you right now. He got that. He got that. Listen for just a minute. Feel this in the Holy Ghost. If you need a healing from God, I want you to come and stand up here at the front.
you need God to heal you in your body, I want you to stand right now. Come on. Come on up here to the front. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. Listen, listen, I've already said there's no judgment here. But if you're dealing with anxiety and fear and depression, I want you to step forward right now. And I'm not trying to embarrass you in any way, shape, or form. Because I believe the Holy Ghost is in this place and God wants you to be set free. He wants you to be liberated in the name of Jesus. If you've never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want you to step forward right now. If there's anybody that needs the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I just wonder, are there any saints of God in this place that you know in the power of the moving of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you why I'm so radical, why I'm so crazy. It's because I watch God take my alcoholic stepfather, a fall down sloppy drunk, mom on her way to, the, to her second divorce. She literally grabbed my stepdad out of Fats Tavern, kicked him out of the bar, told him she was going to file for divorce the next day. He called a buddy who was sitting on a bar stool next to three backsliders. And he was telling him about how his marriage was falling apart. And he said, listen, don't judge it by us. But if you ever need answers, you need to find that church, that apostolic church. <laughs> My stepdad stumbled in to a Pentecostal service just like this one. A little bit tipsy. Because he'd heard how you Pentecostal people act. <laughs> Stumbled into that Pentecostal church a little bit tipsy. And before the preaching was over, my alcoholic stepfather stumbled down that middle aisle to the front, lifted up his hands, and in just one moment's time, God instantly delivered him and filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't want nothing to do with y'all. I wanted to go live my own life. Just leave me alone. But I was so troubled. I was so hurt. I was so broken inside. The things of this world had broken me. And I went to, to, to a revival service with him one time. And my brother sitting right there in the pew next to me. He was a... He was a a dope smoking pothead and he's sitting there fighting all the time and whatever and we're sitting in, the, in that church pew together and the Holy Ghost started moving and both of us lifted up our hands and God filled both of us with the Holy Ghost at the exact same time I'm going to tell you why I'm so radical because I've tried all the stuff in this world but there's nothing like the power of the Holy Ghost I believe it I believe in the Spirit of God So as we begin to pray, here's what I'm asking. I'm asking if you're not up here praying and you don't have a need today, you ought to thank God for that. But I want you to intercede and I want you to pray like you're one of those, one of those sons that is bringing those vessels. God, here's, the, here's another vessel. Let the oil be poured out. Here's another vessel. God, let it be poured out in me because as long as there are empty vessels, the oil is going to flow. Y'all ready? Here's what I want us to do. We're going to lift up our hands. And I want, you to, I want you to lift up your voice here in just a moment. I want you to lift up your voice. And I want you to lift up your voice in faith believing that as you begin to shout unto God that the power, boy, I feel the presence of God in this place right now. That the Holy Ghost is about to sweep across this place. And there are going to be miracles, signs, and wonders. There is going to be an outpouring and a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift up your voice right now all across this place. Come on, lift up your voice right now. Begin to give God some praise. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power and by the authority of the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be delivered. In the name of Jesus, be filled with the Holy Ghost. So 
why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough, He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. My God is more than enough. My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out, he looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh my God. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out. Yeah, he does. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh is my God. Yes, he is. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. All of the earth is His. All of the earth is His. And the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. Why should I worry? So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, he's my God, he is my God. All of the earth is his, all of the earth is his, and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, he's my God, he is my God. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. More than enough. My God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh. He's my God. He is my God. He 
always looks out for me Yes, he does the whole He's my God He is my God Oh, Jehovah Jireh My God He is my God Jehovah Jireh grave today everybody Brianna wants to be buried in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ because she understands the oil is enough oh come on lift your hands all across this building he's not done with you yet there's still people praying all across this place would you lift your voices to him without any music right now would you lift your voice come on everybody from the front to the back from side to side God is doing a work in this place Hallelujah, hallelujah, come on. Call on the name of Jesus. Oil, would you flow? Would you find an empty vessel? Would you find a wayward vessel? Would you find a confused vessel? Would you find a broken vessel right now? In the name of Jesus, would you pour into somebody? Allow God to heal you. Allow God to touch you. Come on, call on his name. Come on, true church, call on his name. Don't get in a hurry. Just call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit in this place. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Is anybody hungry for more? What doth hinder you? To be baptized in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. You need to be baptized today in Jesus' name. If you're wanting to be, if you desire to be, we got water, we got clothes, and we're ready to baptize somebody in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Does anybody believe he's more than enough? Praise the Lord. Let's worship the Lord as they get ready to baptize Brianna. And if you, in the meantime, feel like you want to be baptized, We'll get you baptized as well in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord together. And let's thank our evangelist pastor today for being with us. Brother Dillingham. Thank you, Jesus. The oil is enough. Let's sing about it. Well, in my house, there's been a mercy killing. The man I used to be has been crucified. And the death of this man is the final way of revealing in a spiritual way to live I had to die now if I let that dead man linger in me I might be a little idle in my way so I'm going down to the celebration river I'm gonna take 
take 